Hello, this is Mario from Team Man Bomb, and today I'm back with another reaction video. So, I'm sure you remember my one of my other reaction videos where I reacted to a to an animated story video made by this person named Blue Collar Den. I know they look like furries, but they claim they're not. I call them the furry family because, well, they're they're literally furries. They always deny it when I tell them, but yeah, whatever. She actually saw that reaction video, so I'll leave a link to the in, the in the description about it. So, she works as a bus driver, and that's what she was talking about. And apparently, she decided to make another video about it called Electric Boogaloo, for some we reason. So, I guess she has more to tell. And, as you, as you can see on the screen, the char each of the, the characters are wearing masks. And Mickey Mouse is just sitting here. So yeah, they're wearing masks. So this is clearly recent. So yeah, this is gonna be fun. It's 20 minutes long, so that's she must have a lot to tell. All right, let's just get into it. Three, two, one, let's go. Halloween is almost here. Yeah, it is. Do you know what you're gonna be dressed up as? I'm gonna be a werewolf. I'm gonna be a werewolf. What? I'm gonna be a <laughs> werewolf. I'm gonna well, be well, a werewolf. Why is the plushie changing? Ooh, quality. Hello, Mr. Werewolf. Santa Claus? <laughs> I think that was probably the best intro to any anime story I've ever seen, ever. Okay, now for this cute ass intro. Tales from the Bus Part 2, let's go! So, um, as a side note. I know of a YouTuber who was also a school bus driver who recently got fired due to his videos. There's a whole story behind what? that, but because of that, I decide I'm going to tell stories only from students who no longer ride my bus. Okay. Any name that I use will be a fake name, just Obviously. like I used fake names in the last video. And there'll be Any... no mention of companies or locations, anything in this video. Anyways, I've gotten a, quite a few questions regarding bus driving, which I'll answer here. But first, is it I that your bus can fly? Does it look like it's People flying? People want to know about her. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, I only drove her for a short time. But here's She's the one wheelchair. thing I remember about her, other than the whole umbrella situation. Christmas holidays um, was only a few days situation? away, and it was time to pick up the students. As the teacher brought her out. She began screaming, because ah! it was cold. <laughs> so to try to distract her, one of her teachers began singing, jingle bells, jingle bells, and then, ba 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 ba. It was super what? sweet. Like I loved it. I think she's graduated by now, and I hope yeah, her and her family her. are doing well. I miss her. Do you like field trips? No. Since I'm neurodiverse, mm. I prefer routine and knowing where I'm going. Okay, I'm guessing we're not gonna see any of her her cat personas. It looks like she's just drawing on on Photoshop, but I, that that's just as good. I mean, uh, watching her draw is kind of men mesmerizing. She used to make a, a a couple live streams of her just drawing and rambling. You've I, I've joined those live streams every now and then. You could s probably see my 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 chat and stuff my chat stuff in there if you look. Field trips or charters often take me to places I'm not really familiar with, and it easily overwhelms me. Uh, I prefer to have a schedule and stick to that schedule. Same. Do you name your bus? Do your buses have personalities? No. I may have named a few buses. My first ever bus was Lawrence, a wheelchair <laughs> bus. He was usually pretty reliable. But I a few rode mishaps the bus every now and then have happened, so like coolant leaks or the wheelchair lift just stopping one day. And then uh. I had a baby bus, but I didn't name that one because I was only on it for a short time. And then I had another baby bus who I named Percy. He Percy. was hardy, but finicky. He had some issues, including a brake issue that I found out at the shop. So thankfully the mechanics were right there when it happened. How? Oh, as well Percy. as... A leak that persisted over a year that took mechanics a long time to figure out. Uh, Currently, I have Harvey, another wheelchair bus. Harvey. He's been very reliable so far. No issues. Dare I say, a really useful bus. 
No, don't boo. That's funny. What Come on. Karens, do you deal with on a weekly basis? Uh, weekly? Karens. None. I only they... have a few kids on my bus, and all the oh, parents really? and caretakers are very cooperative and good to work with. Karens I are always do my servants. best to establish good working relationships, so they're not a problem. The Karens and Kyles tend to be drivers who Wait, hate Kyles? to have to be temporarily blocked from the road. I have to <laughs> go into Crescents to pick up the students at their house, pills. if possible. And those streets tend to be a little tricky to maneuver. So um, they get grumpy because my bus tends to take up the whole road. And not to oh, mention, wow. my students take a longer time to get on the bus. So well, even though it's rare, go. it does happen occasionally. So during Halloween, not only did the Santa Sorry, Claus kid something. dress up, he loved to tell scary stories. And it would start out the oh, exact that was same me. way. A long, long time ago. Uh, he would make up scary stories of various monsters like werewolves. I used to tell horror stories about about it. You know, it the clown. Because uh, I, I liked it back then. I liked the I liked the 90s miniseries, not the, the modern movie. It wasn't out yet. Wolves, vampires, witches, mummies, clowns, Five oh, Nights clowns. at Freddy's, killer pizza, you name it. <laughs> And then he Killer asked me pizza. to suggest an idea for him to tell a story, so I thought, and I thought, and then an idea came. Mm. How about a mad scientist? A mad scientist? You're a genius! A it's long, Rick. long time ago! Did you like the kids who sat up front more because you got to know them Wait. better? Oh, we didn't, we didn't get to hear the story. I bet, I bet it was about a, a, a mad scientist named Rick who burps a lot. It probably has a, a very complicated, tragic backstory because characters tend to have those. Or did you not try to talk about non-school stuff? The ones in front tended to chat stuff. more with me, but I didn't like them more because of it. With my Catholic kids, well, I heard the ones in the front more. I still interacted with the ones in the back. I couldn't talk to them as much, however, because of my auditory processing disorder, and I would have a hard time understanding them. In another special needs route, I had two chatty kids, and one sat right behind me and Aww. one sat in the far back, and I was able to talk to both of them just fine. Just the kid who sat in the back had to repeat a lot of things for me. What do you do when a kid throws up on the way to school? Oh, I no. have yet to experience this, and I Barf hope bag. that stays as long as possible. But we do have a procedure for that. In our emergency kits, we have a substance that absorbs liquid, so we would just pour it on the vomit, and then we just use the various items in the kit to clean it up as best as we can. And then we just come by the shop and then they have products to make it a, a more thorough and hygienic clean. Not do even gonna think about that. Do you just take kids to school and to their homes? Or do you also use the bus to take kids on a field trip? I have the choice to do field trips, but I decline every time. So I only take them to and from school. You do eh. get paid extra for field trips, but like I said no. before, field trips aren't my thing. Santa Claus kid had a very large imagination and usually brought things on the bus with him. I'll mention two instances where he brought toys or items on the bus. He oh, brought on large action figures of Batman, Robin, and the Joker. During the entire way back from huh. school to his home, too, he provided me different. a very intense and thrilling show of Batman and Robin trying to defeat the Joker. Joker came back many times, but ultimately, oh, Batman wow. and Robin thwarted Joker just as he arrived home. I thanked Batman for protecting the bus, and then yeah. Batman- Yeah, I bet Batman was like, No need to thank me, I was just doing my job. Do you think I could go form my own team now? Shut up Robin, you're not supposed to talk. Joker, how are you still alive? My mother used to torture me with radiation. Okay. You get that reference? Seriously? Has no one seen the new Joker movie? Man gave me a kiss on the head. <laughs> so charming. And then during Halloween, he made a Ghostbusters proton pack out of a Kleenex box, the he Michelin Man pissy. toy, and a pencil. He was zapping ghosts left, right, and center. I couldn't believe how many ghosts were on my bus, guys. Very Jeez. thankful he brought that proton pack to get rid of all those ghosts. And you were able What's to the worst thing I heard that? while on the bus? I'll answer this in um, two ways, as one of them will get serious. The first thing Penis. is, of course, like swear words and disrespectful <laughs> words to the other. Hey, I'm going to say the P word. Penis. I, I bet a kid said penis. I don't know. 
because that that's just a little kitty joke. Or maybe they said something much much worse, like Randy uh, Randy Marsh on the Wheel of Fortune bad. The kids. Funny enough, my Catholic kids had an advantage on their end because most of them were fluent in Ukrainian, and they would sometimes speak Ukrainian to each other. Oh. I don't know Ukrainian, so it's possible that they said some nasty things. And I just couldn't oh, understand yeah. them. I'm trusting that they didn't, but I'll never know. Now, here comes the series. This is why I'm trying to speak a little bit Italian. Not only because my cousins live in Italy and I, and I one day I might go visit them and I need to learn how to speak their language but and navigate around the country. But also, if I want to curse at someone, I could just do it in Italian and they won't be able to understand what I just said. Unless they know Italian too. Nah. That they didn't, but I'll never know. Now, here comes the serious moment. Um, uh -oh. one of the worst things I heard while driving came from my two way radio. I was loading my Catholic kids onto the bus Catholic when kids. suddenly a panicked driver began shouting through the radio, Bus number to base! One of my kids got hit by a car! Please help me! Call an ambulance! This bus what? was not associated with our school and was in another part of the city, but most of my students heard this. Oh no! Are they okay? Is it one of my friends? I had to keep reassuring them that they were not from that school and that the professionals would take care of everything. Wait, wait I'm, I'm so lost here. What happened? Someone from a car just shouted that out of the blue? Like, drove by? Because I... There are a couple of loons out there who mean no harm, just like to talk to the students, say weird things. I have met a couple of those. I met one during a fire drill, and I was just telling him to buzz off. But he was trying to tell me about what about the song, what the song was on his radio. But uh, whatever. So wait, did someone actually get hit, get hurt with a car or something? I need to listen to this. That again. they were not from that school. This bus was not associated with our school. My driver began sh kids. Onto the bus when right. suddenly a panicked driver began shouting through the radio, Bus number to base! One of my kids got hit by a car! Please help me! Call an ambulance! This bus oh, was not associated with our school and was in another part of the city, but car. most of my students heard this. Mm. Oh no! Are they okay? Is it one of my friends? I had to keep reassuring them that they were not from that school and that the professionals would take care of everything. Okay. The bus was uh, quieter than usual that day as updates came in. Thankfully, that student who was hit only suffered a concussion and was out of the hospital shortly after. Oh. Oh. How big of an adjustment was it to go from driving a car to a school bus? Did you have to get a special license to be a bus driver? At first, the adjustment was very noticeable. It's very seamless now, but I remember when I started out, you know, during training, I would get into my car to and it feels so to drive weird a school bus. It's like because driving a car. you spend hours driving, sitting super tall in the school bus, and then you. I honestly don't think you need training to drive a school bus. It's like driving a car. You learn that when you're 16. It's like it's a it's a test where you bench press a car up and down. Okay, I hear that's not how the test goes, but I really wish that was how the test went because that would make my my driving test so much easier. Actually, I'm not taking a driver test. Okay, I'm going to get out of this position right now. <sighs> kind of made a fool of myself. I'm sorry about that. You come back to your little two-door coupe, and you feel so tiny. Oh. Your way of thinking when it comes to driving changes. You're in a big vehicle. Like, you need oh, to wow. drive smart so you don't hit anything. Which can be easy to do if you're not careful. Jeez, that would have been nice to hear I after I made a fool of myself. But buses have. Yeah, that would that would have been good to know before I just made a fool of myself right in front of you. Have guys. what's called a tail swing, since they have a large area that sticks over their rear axles. So if you're not careful, that tail can swing out and smack adjacent cars, signs, infrastructure. You name it. A kid. It. You a can't kid. just turn tightly like that. you could in a car. You have to make a wide turn while watching your tail. And making sure you're giving yourself lots of room, which can be hard sometimes. So when you go down a small or skinny street, you have to be so careful. You also get used to using six mirrors instead of two, 
each mirror serving a function to help you see where your boss is and to prevent potential accidents and impacts. Another thing is that you also have to check your bus over every single day. Normally, you just hop into your vehicle without a second thought, turn it on, and just go. But when you drive a school bus, you have to check to make sure that everything's in perfect working order. And that means oh, really? checking the engine, the fluid levels, the tires, the lights, the mirrors, the bottoms of yeah, the bus, yeah. <laughs> the reflecting strips, the seats, the buttons or switches, the emergency kit and fire extinguisher. And after every route, you have to thoroughly check. <laughs> I don't I uh, do you really have to do all this usually my thought process when I'm getting into my car in the morning I just get in the car start the engine and then I say fuck I'm still alive check your bus for kids because sometimes kids fall asleep and they don't get off at school or home oh so if you I've don't heard check, of that scenario they could be trapped or stranded in a bus how traumatizing would that be for a kid to wake up all alone in a bus yard and trapped. Fuck. So you gotta check every single time. You won't get in trouble if you find a kid. You will get into a lot of trouble if you leave one behind. Oh. And I don't know how every country tests school bus drivers. In Canada though, we just need to get a special endorsement on our regular license. In order to drive so your license issuer will test you specifically for those things you don't necessarily need a specific license to drive a school bus it's handy but you don't need it but if you want to drive transit buses or big charter buses you need to get a class 2 license Sorry, that's what's hurts. called in Canada I don't know if it's called like that in any other country so school bus driver what's called in called? Canada I don't buses you need to get a class 2 license. That's what's called in Canada. I don't know if it's called like that in any other country. Hmm. Here in New York, it's probably called... Bus, bus license. It, oh, that, that, was such, that was such a failed New York accent. I'm sorry. So school bus drivers can keep their class 5 license, and that's your regular license that everyone can get. But they have an S on their license. Just showing that they can legally an drive S? a school bus. An SS? Have you ever no, had a situation a where you need to stop the bus? For example, a kid to something dangerous or it could be another reason? I mean, I did stop that one time oh, because man. I was laughing so much when the girl dropped her umbrella. I've stopped the oh. bus just to make sure some medically fragile children were okay. I've also stopped the bus because the bus was having issues. Those have been, like, the only times I've stopped the bus. Hey, uh, uh -huh. this is Editor Lissa here. Um, I actually huh? did remember that I did have a kind of dangerous situation happen. Like, not in the case oh, that, our, that my life was in danger. It was more a case of one of my kids who had autism spectrum disorder. He somehow huh. wiggled out of his, like, special harness and just was starting harness. to freely walk around the bus. And <laughs> I did not feel comfortable driving the bus while he was walking around. And because... Uh, at least in my jurisdiction, you're not allowed to touch the kids, you know, just to protect yourself. Like, you can't touch them in any way, so I couldn't really, like, make him sit down. So I actually had to call the school. They had what? to get teachers to where I was to come and take him there just because I, I couldn't put him in a seat and... And you couldn't just tell the kid, you couldn't just turn your head back and say, Hey, kid! Set the hell down. That's what I would have done, quite honestly. But this this was still a nice choice because when if your if your kid has autism spectrum or some kind of something, they could get a little unpredictable and you don't know how they could react to that. So yeah, you made the right choice. Don't don't listen to me. I, what do I know? Yeah, so that was the only quote-unquote dangerous one. I didn't fear like he was going to attack me or anything. Of course not. It was more for his safety. I didn't want to like have to suddenly break and he's um, standing up he and he just falls me. and he hurts himself. He would attack himself. you. Like, why? No, that that would not be cool. So yeah, that that is my interjection. Let's let's continue. Was there ever any constant drama going on with the students or teachers? I've always had good working relationships with parents, caretakers, and teachers, so I've never had drama in that sense. The most <laughs> drama. drama would probably be. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I really don't. I really don't mean to make fun of her. 
I guess that's how Canadians pronounce drama. Probably, it just sounds a little funny to it. T- sounds a little funny to me. I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not being trying to be rude. YouTube, please stay back. Please go away. Mean comments. I'm not. I'm. I'm accepting. Please don't hurt me. I'm. I'm nice. Be a child acting out of sorts and being a little bit of a bully. But that's about it. And also safety officer. What we don't talk about that drama. So I was driving my finicky baby bus, Percy, when it began oh, overheating. Despite checking my coolant levels, and it was at the appropriate levels, apparently Percy decided to leak it all out and overheat. Then there was trouble. Percy decided to overheat and conk out. Oh no, how will I deliver these kids to the school? Percy said. Alyssa didn't know what to do. So she, so she just get, got out of the car and started hitchhiking through the Canadian wilderness, not knowing where she was going. So I told my students that we had to wait for the mechanics to arrive because our engine was hot. So those students well, understood that. the engine was too hot to drive. But while we were waiting, Ruble decides to say, Uh oh, fire, fire! Fire? Fu- no, 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 no! <laughs> he said fire! This boy said fire. <laughs> he just decided to say poor Ruble. He just he doesn't know that he's too young and he doesn't know that you should never say fire. Uh, sh- shout out fire. You should only do that if there is a fire, or else you're just gonna cause a whole panic for nothing. Of course, Ruble is just a little baby. He doesn't know any better. I think he's a little older now. He must have been really young back then or whatever. Size to say. Uh oh, fire, fire. Fire? Fire! No, 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 no! Ruble was quoting Thomas and Friends, and he was trying to say, on, on, faster, faster, but he couldn't say faster very well, and it came out as fire. It took about, like, a minute or two to reassure the students that there was not a fire. Great troublesome truck impression, Ruble. I give it a gold star. And then the mechanics came, they topped up my coolant, and then we were off. What's the worst thing you ever had to clean on your bus? Snot. A oh. kid sneezed and sprayed all over the seat in front of him, and he no, wiped it no. on his seat. Uh, Dude, don't so picture that. I've had don't quite a few that. questions regarding disruptive kids or troublesome kids, so I'm gonna lump all those questions in together. Oh boy. This is one of the reasons many people don't want to be bus drivers, because kids can be very disrespectful, especially depending on what area you drive in. Oh yeah. Some kids might just call you a penis, while others will tell you to go suck their balls. That's a South Park reference. Go watch the South Park movie, kids. Uh, no, not kids. Don't watch it if you're a kid. Don't watch it if you're a kid. I, I don't want the Karen mom to bust them down my door. So yeah, as South Park demonstrated, kids could get very disrespectful. That's, I guess that's the reason why people don't want to be bus drivers or teachers, because they don't want to deal with that crap. I, I don't like to do... I don't want to do any job that concerns kids because I am horrible with kids because I'm, I'm I could get so timid and little kids will want to take advantage of that. I'm just like I'm just a punching bag basically a pushover. Now I've had no issues with my special needs kids. It was my Catholic school who tested me and I'm not saying they're bad. They were uh. they were great kids like they were awesome but I did have some that tried to test me. So uh. I only started driving them after half a year, because that's when I returned from mat leave. So they see this brand new person, and of course it's a little awkward. They're like, oh, oh you're no. a new driver, and stuff like that. New person. And then eventually they began to just kind of see what I would allow. Eh. Now, this is only a few things in regard yeah. of discipline. I have my core base rules that every kid should follow, like no food or drinks, be respectful, no shouting, no yelling, no bullying, stuff like that. Typical rules <laughs> in the bus. Those are the Jeez, core is there anything rules. I can do? On the first day I introduced myself to them, I told them I don't want to have to add rules, but I will if I need to. Mm, so after a couple weeks, amendments. they began to test their luck and became a little disruptive. Oh, and it wasn't like bad or anything. It was more like trying to move to other seats while I was driving or like saying some stuff they probably shouldn't and stuff like that. Oh. So after a, well, admittedly tiring day, I decided it was time to add in a temporary rule. I was oh. changing the seating order. Since it was mainly the older kids who were acting up, each older kid had to sit with a younger kid 
and they couldn't sit in the back of the bus. And for those who maybe Man. never rode the bus, Too bad the for bus those who are actually usually behaving. has a hierarchy. Younger kids usually sit in the front, older kids usually sit in the back. The back is where the cool kids sat. Discrimination. And you gradually get yourself further back the older you are. This is more for buses wow. who don't have assigned seating. So I put their names above their seats, and they complied. The younger kids loved it. They got oh, wow. to sit in the back. The older ones oh, were yeah. understandably not too happy, but they followed the rules. And I told them, as long as you guys obey the core rules, I will let up on this rule. And they did. After a couple weeks, they were back to sitting in their old arrangements. Then came a situation where we gained a few more students. The younger kids were gladly sharing their seats, but the older kids weren't so keen on sharing their seats after having these seats to themselves for most of the year. So when I arrived to school, I told the older kids I wanted to talk to them for a few minutes. So the younger kids got off, oh, and I went to the back. You know it's bad and I explained a situation where they might need to start sharing seats with each other, and I allowed them to choose who they could sit with. I offered any suggestions, and one of the older students suggested that we only do this in the afternoon, and that they take turns. And I thought it was a good idea. And I made up yeah. a schedule for when each older kid needed to share their seat on which day of the week. And it worked. Because I let them negotiate respectfully, they respected the new seating arrangement. Oh, and wow. maybe that's just one of the secrets of gaining kids' respect. Treating them appropriately to their age, stepping up when you need to, and allow for negotiations depending on the situation. So basically Some everything I can't get a do. a bit strict, sometimes ridiculously strict with their rules, like absolutely no talking, no oh, food yeah. whatsoever on the bus, ever. And no taking I a shit on the bus. disagree with that a bit, just a bit. The rules are there for a reason, and you should be able to explain them, like for safety reasons, you know. But I think there's room for reasonable flexibility. I'm fine with them talking as long as they don't get too loud and that they know to when to quiet up. For example, when we approach a railroad crossing. And I'm fine if I eat oh. food on the bus when we're not driving, but as soon as I shift into drive, that food should be put away. They need Damn to it. understand why the rules are in place. Because you just can't mindlessly follow rules if you don't know the reason why they're enforced. In the first well, too place, bad for you. That's what everyone does every day. Quietness helps the listen to certain things and not distract them, especially at a railroad crossing. Eating food on the bus could potentially cause a child to choke, and not every driver is CPR certified. If the driver doesn't know why the rules are there, the kids won't know either, and they see no reason to follow them. So be reasonable, step up when you need to, and be respectful. My last story is after the whole Germanic situation with that safety officer. Ruble was on the oh. bus, and my Catholic yep. kids loved him. They would sometimes fight to sit beside him. And they tried oh, wow. squeezing three into his seat area, which his car seat took up half the seat. <laughs> so one kid tried to sit on the floor. And I almost drove away from the school with that <laughs> questionable seating arrangement. Oh, so wow. I let them make a deal. Each kid, after every stop, can swap to sit beside him so they would take turn. Wow. And it worked! <laughs> At each kid's stop, the rotation of three students would happen. And got famous. let's be real, I think Ruble liked the attention. And that's Tales of the Bus Part 2. Wow. I have no idea when the third one it's will come out. school bus. But rest assured, it will eventually come out. I just essentially exhausted most of my stories from previous years. So yeah. I just wanted to warn you that it might be a while before some fresh new stories come to you. Feel yeah. free to ask me more questions that I didn't answer regarding school busing. And, uh... Take care, everyone. Bye. Okay. So. Oh. Okay, that was Tales from the Bus Part 2. Now, I was gonna originally planning to end the video here, but apparently she posted another video of her son, Ruble, just, just six hours ago, just today. It's called... Uh, it's called Laughing Gas, so and it's starring Ruble, so this should be a blast. So yeah, um, you guys are getting a little extra treat. You watch me react to two videos in one video, like this has never happened before. Yeah, it's called Laughing Gas. So let's just see how it how it goes.
Rubel at the dentist. No, 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 no! One minute later. One. Okay, and that was Laughing Gas. So, yeah, these two videos were made by Blue Collar Den, aka the Furry Family. I'll leave a link to both videos in the description in my pr other reaction video of their stuff. So.